Hello and welcome to Green Fingers. Now in the last series, we introduced you to the sustainable garden concept. In this series, we're going into the community at a grand scale. We're visiting primary schools throughout the Perth metropolitan area and we're building sustainability classrooms. Can you imagine what it would be like having a sustainability classroom when you were at school? Think of all the great life skills you could have picked up straight from your school syllabus. Well, here at Kerry Baptist College, that is exactly what's going to happen. We'll be building a chicken pen, installing an aquaponics system, outdoor kitchen, planting an urban orchard and much more. Over the next two weeks, we're going to transform this patch of turf into something way more productive. The kids are excited, so are we, so let's really make something special here. I am surrounded by uh, all the kids in Year 6 at Kerry Baptist College. Is this the best class? Yes! Yeah, it is. But what makes this school water-wise? Yep. Uh, we have dual flush toilets, so we don't waste water. So anything else? Yep. Um, in the boys' toilets, there's, um, it only flushes four times a day, which saves 95% of water. Why should we save water? Why? Yep. So in the future, we can have a lot of water to use and drink. So I think the Year 6s are a full bottle on being water-wise. Jennifer, do you think their teaching staff will enjoy working in the sustainability classroom? I think our enthusiastic teachers will be out here every day incorporating math, science, society and environment, English into this fantastic garden project. Does it give you the chance to get involved with the community? Oh, it certainly does, Todd. We're really excited about the opportunities presented through this garden, not only for our own school community, but also for the wider Harrisdale community. It's just a phenomenal project. It's wonderful. We're on the east side of the school where it's all happening. We've got our plan, so we know where everything's going. This is going to be amazing. Good luck getting the kids back in the classroom when this is finished. Hello. Yo. Renee, how are you? Finally. Good, you got here. thanks, mate. How are you? Good, 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 good. This is a pretty ripper chicken coop you got going on here. Tell me a bit about it. Um, well, it's, as you can see, it's work in progress at the moment, but we, we're getting there. Um, and yeah, hopefully we should be done by the end of the day. And what we're using here, timber-wise, is just a renewable resource in, in pine. And also, this area, because it's close to the bush area, we've got predators, foxes and snakes, so we'll make sure it's sort of snake-free and fox-free to keep them out. And, Keep the chickens happy. So how many do you reckon this coop will fit? 50, 60 chickens? Oh, that's a few too many, but probably uh, probably 10 to 15 for the area we've got here, so that'd be nice and comfortable. Yeah, so like a five-star resort, really, for chickens? Pretty much a five-star resort, pools, yeah. It'd be some nice. umbrellas and stuff? Definitely, definitely. Awesome. So what have you got me doing today? Uh, well, the roof will be here in probably 10 minutes, so cool. you're up there. Wicked, how does let's that do sound? it. Sounds good. Okay guys, so what are some of the water-wise techniques that the school's actually using at the moment, Jonathan? Well, we grow native Australian plants, mm -hmm. so they don't use as much water. Good one. What about you, Jackie? Uh, we put all our green waste into the compost bin and then spread it all over the plants. Very good. And are there any other ways that we can uh, save water? Um, well, we've got sprinklers that go on our water our oval and they only go on and off between 6 and 9pm. Well done, Sophie. So as you can see, three experts right here. After the break, we'll meet some barra, up close and personal, and the hardscaping continues in the sustainability classroom. Aquaponics is a major element of the sustainability classroom, and to show the children what it's all about, it's off to Hydroponic Express to have a chat with Maurice. And of course, the most fun is with the Barramundi. All right, as you can see, we've got some beautiful barramundi in our tank here. And uh, what happens is we feed the barra. These are in a 1,500 litre tank. And uh, the fish grow at about one kilogram, and you give them about one kilogram of food. So they'll grow to how much food you give them. But the most interesting thing is to watch the fish having a feed. So I'll give them a go, see what happens. Well, that disappeared real quick, so we'll try another one. Oh, and I think they're re ready for some more. The barra in this tank are about three years old. However, you can harvest them after roughly six months when they're plate size. Delicious. 
Another favourite of mine are bananas, and with this hydroponic system, you can grow them all year round, outside the tropics. G'day kids, here we are in the uh, tropical dome now, having a look around um, what's possible growing in a greenhouse environment. So we are providing the plants with our optimal temperatures so we can uh, avoid the cold of winter and the heat of summer by putting misters and so on on. And you probably notice it's a bit warm in here, all sweating a little bit. And so it's absolutely ideal for bananas and tropical plants. And we grow them in this product called expanded clay. So if we take a little bit there and have a look at it, it's really lightweight. Now what we do in here is we, uh, we plant the bananas on at the start of the year. Last year we planted these on. And the banana pup, which is a small one, grows. And at the end of summer, a hand of bananas comes out. And uh, that's what we're basically waiting for these to turn yellow so that we can uh, eat them. And they make really great smoothies. Hydroponic Express is open seven days a week and are your one-stop shop for a garden of healthy and organic produce. These veggie beds are an integral part of the sustainability classroom. And Steve, thanks for giving us a hand to put them together, but seriously, mate, they look so simple, I'm sure we could have managed it on our own. So these are really, really basic. Four pins, no sharp edges, will never rust, polyethylene, plastics, it's great, yeah. And I see they come flat packed, so that means you could get them into a little courtyard or even up on a balcony if you want. Easy to transport, real tight places, no worries. Excellent, well, we'll be able to get the rest of these together. Absolutely. Space the garden beds out in such a way that access for maintenance and harvesting is easy. Getting the soil right is the key to healthy plant growth. Sandy soil, typical in WA, is very nutrient poor and does not hold water well. So, to get the best out of our fruit and veggies, we're filling our raised beds with Biowise Garden Art Compost. Daz and the team have their hands full filling those veggie beds, which is definitely going to keep the kids busy. And next to that project, Renee and Hamish are planning out the espalier frames while they wait for the roofing sheets to arrive on site. Hey, so what we're doing is we're going to definitely put that bottom plate in there and we'll put one across the top. We've got two yeah. sheets of lattice which we'll get and we'll put those up here, nail them in, and then the grapes will just grow up nicely and it'll be a nice little feature. Sounds good. What's the next step? Um, well, I might get you. We've got a couple more posts to go in down there, so if you grab a spade and get into it, it'll be great. Yeah, righto. Post a post. <laughs> really don't think it's for me, so I've conned the boys into doing it. Autumn is the best time to establish fruit trees. It gives them the whole of winter to develop the strong, healthy root system they'll need if they're going to survive a long, hot per summer. And to make sure you get that good root system, you need a good soil. And this dry, sandy, water repellent rubbish we've got just won't do. So we're digging a big hole, we're putting biowise compost in it, and then to make sure it's absolutely perfect, soil solver. Soil Solver's unique balanced blend of natural clays, silts and rock minerals cures water repellency forever. It contains everything you need to mix with the sand except for the good quality nitrogen supplied by the compost. The rock minerals break down slowly and release their nutrients and trace elements for decades into the future. What a difference from this dry, water repellent, fertiliser leaching sand that just falls away in your hands to this rich, water retentive loam that actually holds on to nutrients and encourages the growth of positive soil microorganisms and earthworms. And the best news, you only ever have to apply it once. Daz and Ben have prepared the holes for the fruit trees. Joe's bought those fruit trees. Joe, tell me about some of your favourites. Uh, the first one is this Midian Berry. Nice. It's an Australian ground cover. Um, it grows really well in our Perth conditions and has a little berry the size of a pea and is really, really nice. Cool. Uh, another one is the uh, Dade White Sapote. Uh, to me, it tastes a bit like a custard banana. How uh, big would this one grow? Uh, that can get upwards of four to five metres, um, cool. but with some pruning, you can certainly keep it uh, down to a reasonable height. Mm -hmm. And another one I have here is a goji berry. What are some of the benefits of this one? 
This one is very high in antioxidants, mm -hmm. has a loads and loads of vitamins and so forth in it. So they're ripe and ready to go? They are, help yourself. And I might have a leaf. They're also edible. Well, you can eat the leaves too. You can. Yum. OK, so what kind of water-wise things can you do at home, Nick? Well, when I brush my teeth, I always turn off the tap. Excellent. Important to brush your teeth. Joel? Before we start the washing machine, we make sure that it's full. Clothes are all clean. That's good. What about you, Jess? You only have a two-minute shower. What happens if you're a bit ponky? No. A bit smelly? No. Two minutes 15? No. Two minutes 10? No. Two minutes? Yes. OK, thank you. After the break, Daz and the team install a rainwater tank, which is another great way to save water. And also Hamish and Renee will be completing the garden screens for the espalier. With the garden beds in place and filled with the super rich bio-wise soil conditioner, we're now going to add all the minerals and silts the vegetables need for strong growth and nutritious produce. As with the fruit trees, we'll be using soil solver, but to suit the cultural requirements of the vegetables, and because we're using a highly organic soil mix, we'll be using a higher application rate of 10 kilos per square metre. So, Maurice, year sixes have been out, and I believe they're a full bottle on the aquaponics system now. Oh, they had an absolute blast. They uh, got to feed the fish, they got to see working systems, and uh, they really are ready to, to move on that now. How about showing us through the system that you're going to install for the kids here at the school? Sure, Steve. Um, we've got a basic tray set up with about 1.6 by 1.6, growing with expanded clay in the tray. And uh, then there's also a, a tank set up where the fish will be swimming around nicely. It's a thousand litre tank. We use an aluminium frame, which is 25 mil mil finished. The tray also is UV stable, so there'll be no trouble in time with the sun. And we've grown this product called Expanded Clay, which is an absolute fabulous product, if you can see. So that's a perfect medium for growing your plants in. No soil whatsoever. We've got a bit of plumbing feeding into a water pump, so the, the kids will be able to engage and see the fish. They'll be able to feed the fish very easily. They'll be able to stand around the system nicely and, and do their planting on. And what happens is the pump pumps the water, uh, which has got the fish excrement in it, and that pumps it up to the top of the tray, filters through the expanded clay, which acts as a biological filter, and then that runs back as clear water back into the tray. So the fish are happy, plants are happy, children are happy. Lattice time, I've got the nail gun, but I'm gonna need Hamish's help. Right, Hamish? You're back. Where am yeah. I putting these nails? Okay, right, let's line it up with these studs here and we'll push it up to the top. Okay, right, if you just shoot straight through there, that's perfect. Let Over it rip. Here. Yep. Nice, and one more down here. Shoot that in there. Righto, Hamish, that's the lattice done. What's going on here? Well, actually, I'm just a builder. I can build anything, but maybe a rose or something like that? I don't think you can eat roses. I think not. That's true. Steve, thanks for dropping off the tank. It looks great. But tell me, what is so good about a polyethylene tank compared to, say, a metal tank? Polyethylene is a fantastic product. Um, it will never rust. Uh, it's extremely durable um, and it's very, very light. It was very easy to put in place. So tell me, what is one really good tip you'll give to anybody setting up a water tank? I think the most important thing is understanding how much rainfall and what size tank you will choose. Setting up your rainwater tank, ensure you have a level ground and plenty of water runoff off your gutters and that's why you will achieve full water as next to possible. So. Excellent, thanks very much Steve. So what's your favourite part about being a water wise school, Samuel? It's knowing that animals are having lots of water to drink and we're not being greedy girls. Good answer, Ellie? Knowing that all of us do our part to help not waste water. Good, and Caitlin? That we get this beautiful garden that will be really helpful in the future. I like that answer too. After the break, the kindy kids go crazy for a whole heap of worms and the fish get a new home here at Kerry Baptist College.
we're going to give this store a lick of paint to protect it from the elements and to add a little bit more colour to the garden. And I reckon it looks pretty funky. So we're here with our kindies. And today, guys, we're going to make a worm farm. Can you all wiggle like worms? Yeah! The first thing we're going to do with our worm farm is we've got to put some, a special stuff in there to start the farm soil. off. And it's called soil or cocoa peat. So we'll pour that in the bottom first. The next thing that we're going to do is we've got to put our worms in. So are you ready to all help with putting the worms in? Yeah! Come on, guys. Let's put the worms in their new home. Yoo-hoo! So now the worms are in, what do you think they like to eat? All bananas. Yeah, bananas and apples and pears. So now it's time to tip some food into their new farm. So they've all got something to eat. Let's tip it in. This is their very favourite. This is crushed corn and to worms it's just like chocolate. Do you all love chocolate? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Coming up next, a quick look at what's on. At Seven News. 